Do you know what this is? It's a Leatherman. And you never want to be without one of these. It could save your life. I want you all to participate in the Leatherman Club. This one has a number of useful tools. It's got some pliers with cutters. It also has some nice knives and some screwdrivers and some scissors. I happen to have the frou-frou version. It has a butter knife and a cocktail fork. <laughs> <laughs> but this tool has served me well over the years, and so I'm going to tell you three stories about how this Leatherman has saved my life or averted a, pot averted a potentially life-threatening event. I'm going to tell you uh, three stories. One of those stories is true, and two are tall tales. <laughs> and at the end, I'm going to ask for a show of hands and vote on which one you think is the true story. When I was in graduate school, I studied great white sharks at the Farallone Islands, just off of San Francisco. Now, how do you study an 18-foot long great white shark very carefully and in the biggest boat you can find? Well, as graduate students, unfortunately, all we could find was a borrowed 11-foot Boston whaler. We were out there studying how sharks thermoregulate, meaning it, whether or not they can maintain a body temperature that's warmer than the surrounding seawater. Now, imagine taking a, the temperature of a great white shark. <laughs> Open mind, please. My, what big teeth you have. <laughs> well, we managed to convince the sharks to follow these internal thermometers, and then we would follow them around and record the data. Now, great white sharks, and all sharks in general, are very sensitive to magnetic fields. And so they would often come up when our engine was idle, and they would mouth our engine. Well, this one day, the shark not only mouthed the engine, but it came by and stole our hydrophone, which is our recording, uh, recording instrument that was tightly lashed to the boat. Well, it was taking us away with it, and it was about to capsize us and pull us under. So I pulled out my knife, and I cut that rope, and I was able to avert getting capsized. Then some, some years later, I went to Alaska, and I took that Leatherman with me. I worked for the state parks for the summer, and I had many grand adventures in Alaska. But one of the best was uh, a trip I took to a park outside of Homer. And the ranger came and picked us up, me and another summer employee, and halfway back to this park, he asked us if we had our sleeping bags. Well, we did. So he dropped us off on the beach, and he said, I'm going to come pick you up tomorrow morning on the other side of this peninsula. And you should really spend the night at this glacier that's at the top. OK, so here we are, went off down the beach. No map, no idea what was in store for us. Down the trail, we found the trail, we walked up it, and it was gorgeous. Gorgeous views everywhere. It was really stunning. And late afternoon, as we got just up to the crest of the hill, we looked, and there was the glacier, fire red in the setting sun. Absolutely gorgeous. So we settled in, got ready for, for the evening, and realized we had no food. We both dug through our packs, nothing. And then my traveling companion found a can of beans in the bottom of her pack. Wow, what a relief. But then we didn't know what to do. How do you get into a can of beans in the middle of nowhere? Ha, ah, the Leatherman. The Leatherman has a can opener. So we were able to open the can of beans and get food that evening. I used to do a lot of triathlons, and one of the last ones I did was this one here in Pacific Grove in 2008. And the start was crazy, very hectic, as they always are. But when I got out of the water, I realized I was first. I felt invincible. I raced up to the changing area, got ready for the bike, got out on my bike, and you have to do a couple of loops. And I was coming in to that f end of that first loop. All my friends were there cheering for me. And the announcer saw the number on my bib, so he announced my name. And as I'm coming into that turn, my shoelace catches in my bike chain, and I topple over right there in front of everybody. Well, I wasn't hurt. I was just really embarrassed. And I was OK because the, I was no longer in the front of the pack, and they were all gone. But I looked back, <coughs> and there was another pack 
coming. So I had to get out of the way. And I, I didn't know what to do. I was right in the middle of this turn. They wouldn't be able to get around me. And so I grabbed my knife, I cut my shoelace, and I was able to scramble out of the way and uh, avert a near uh, disaster. So, those are my three tales of the show of, of hands. Who believes in the shark tale? All right, <laughs> and how about the Alaska tale? And the uh, tri triathlon tale. All right, very mixed. Well, that's probably because the shark tale is all true except for the last <coughs> part with the hydrophone, because we had it on a long cord, we were able to get it out of the water, no problem. The triathlon tale was almost all true, except I lost my tire instead of my, <laughs> my chain. So there was no need for a knife there, and it wasn't actually that big a deal. I just had to pull over and put it back on. So that leaves the Alaska tale, and that was the true story. So I hope this has convinced you that you never want to be without your Leatherman. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> President.